than any other. Yeah. Hallelujah.
then who could ever stop us? Yes. Hallelujah. Let that song meditate in your mind and your heart. We serve a God that's greater and stronger. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And our God is everything. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. If you need a doctor, he is there. If you need a financial advisor, he is there. If you need a lawyer, to him on today. We give honor to our deacons. Amen. Hallelujah. We give honor to our chairman, Deacon Mutrion, today and the deacons. Amen. We give honor to our mother Hutchison. Amen. And the deaconess. Amen. We give honor to our only lady Miller. Amen. My brothers and sisters in the gospel. We give honor to you who chose today to serve the Lord on today and come into his house of prayer. We give honor to those ones who are watching on YouTube and social media. Amen. We thank God for the spirit on today, amen. And we thank God for Founders Day on today, amen. Our founder, Reverend Lewis Howard, I mean Simmons, excuse me, 
Amen. And we thank God for our first year in our new edifice on today. Amen. We got a, a lot to celebrate on today. The Lord is truly doing a lot here at EBC. And we truly give God, God all the honor, all the glory, all the praise. Amen. For what he is doing in this church and what he's doing through our pastor. Amen. And at this time, we're getting ready to have our invocation. Amen. What should be done by our own Deacon Griffin? Amen. Let's greet him with a hearty amen. Amen. Thank you. Yes. We're looking that you're going to bless that cafe, Lord, that we ain't going to be able to close the door. 
comes and do our scripture reading and following that we will have our welcome by our own sister Patri um, Pat Mutri in that order amen. amen thank you Lord good morning. good morning I will be reading Psalms 100 to its entirety make a joyful noise unto the Lord all you lands serve the Lord with gladness come before his presence with singing Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into the, his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. I have read Psalms 100. Yeah. 
Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Giving all honor and praises to God. Greetings to everyone in their respectable places. My name is Tressie Rivers. I'm from Sand Hill Baptist Church in Walterboro, South Carolina. And this is my goddaughter, Jessica Fedger. We are glad to be in the number today. Amen. 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 Hello, my name is Tamika Brown. I'm from Sand Hill, South Carolina. My church is Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church. And my pastor is the Dr. Reverend Indiana Jr. I'm here visiting my friend who I actually just moved to Somerville, so I took up my church. Amen. So uh, I, my friend who I just started working with, she said, well, come join, come to my church. Amen. If you like it. So I, that's why I'm here. <laughs> Amen. 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 As I scan over the church, if there will not be another, on behalf of our pastor, our first lady, and along with everyone here at Emmanuel Baptist Church, we welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you. Amen. Amen. We thank our sister Pat for that welcome greeting. Uh, we will not have any announcements today. However, we ask that you govern yourselves. All the announcements are on the program that's listed. Amen. But also to remind you that our pastor will be going out this evening. Um, we will be going to Bethlehem Deliverance Worship Ministry. Um, and the bus will be leaving promptly at 245. So please, all those who are going out with our pastors this evening, we ask that you be here. At 245, the bus will be leaving, okay? Now we're getting ready to go into our Founders Day and first, first year for our new edifice. Amen. Celebration. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. We thank God for our founder. Amen. And we thank God for our new edifice, everything he's doing here. We've given God praise and thanking him for it. Amen. And so now we get ready to have our founder's bio by Sister Shamika Guthrie. Amen. And after that, we will have a video um, presentation. And in this video presentation, we will have an interview that's going to be played of our own chairman, Deacon David Moutry. Amen. We'll also have an interview with Sister Leslie Hunter. Amen. And then we'll have a video of our EBC, our new sanctuary that we're actually standing, we're actually in right now, of the construction of how the different stages of how this beautiful edifice was erupted, erected. Amen. So we ask that you just govern yourself that everything that will be presented to you on today. Amen. Thank you.
do God's bidding. He was given his trial sermon, his license, and allowed to serve under Reverend Brown. He proved himself to the community and was finally accepted and ordained in the gospel ministry. In later years, he did further studies in theology and received an honorary doc doctorate from the Grambling Theological Seminary. He married Sarah Viola Gregory, and they had a daughter, Ernestine Simmons. He and his wife organized and operated the Christian Youth Educational Alliance, also known as CYEA, Vocational Institute, first located on Beach Avenue, Union Heights, Charleston, South Carolina. There they had a kindergarten, daycare center, and taught other subjects such as printing, music, woodworking, and adult reading. In the year 1954, the late Reverend Lewis H. Simmons had a vision to build a church. It had already been predestined, ordained, confirmed, and arranged by God that Reverend Simmons would travel to the country of Hamilton, Bermuda, to run a soul-saving revival. While there, Reverend Simmons would be commissioned by God to go back home and build a I build a church and call it Emmanuel because I will be with you. So with only a few followers of God, not of man, the church was established as a chartered and incorporated organization on October 7, 1954. This very same spot of ground was purchased and the groundbreaking ceremony was held on Thanksgiving Day of that same year. The pastor of our founder, the late Reverend David G. Daniels delivered the sermon and his subject was most befitting. Upon this rock I will build my church. That is the value of our founder, the Reverend Dr. Louis Howard Simmons. And David Mutri, uh, how you doing? Doing fine. Good. So, you are our, you're the chairman of Deacon Board. Yes. Right? That's right. And you've been the chairman since the church was founded. That's right. So, in 1954, so you've been the chairman for every year. Every year. Every year. So, that's about 67 years, I believe. Yes. That's right. Wow. That's a long time. Oh, that's a long time. It's a long time, but that's a good thing. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. So, we appreciate you being here with us today, asking you some questions about the founder, uh, Reverend Lewis Howard Simmons. So, my first question for you, when did you meet the founder? Well, I met the founder in 1950. He was pastor in that first Baptist church. Mm -hmm. That's where I was baptized. Yes, sir. And I met him there. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, so, you met him. And then I'm sure you guys got to know each other. Oh, yes. We good friends. Really? Yes. Okay. And then he... he like, go ahead. He would take me everywhere he go. I didn't have a car or any kind of transportation. And he would take me with him. And that's the way I got to know him real well. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So I'm guessing when he did that, did he, he talk to you about the vision that he received? Oh, yeah. His vision was to build a church. That was his vision the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, he was, he was, of course, he was a uh, pastor at First Baptist, but his vision was always to build a church. He would talk about that all the time. Really? Yes. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So, in doing that, I'm sure you saw all the things that he went through. So, what were some of the struggles? Well, some of the struggles was Trying to build a church in in the fifties, that was a struggle itself. <laughs> yes, sir. And no one had any money, and he didn't get the cooperation from too much people. Um, the struggle, I think, the biggest struggle he had is from different people from different churches saying we don't need another church. Wow. And uh, but that wasn't their vision. Mm. You know, Simmons had the vision, yes, so I told him to build a church. So, with 14 head of people, mm -hmm. that's what we started off with. That was a struggle. Mm -hmm. And no more than about three men and the rest women. Wow. And we just went with the vision. 
he gives us a similar division and we jump in and help him to do this. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So, man, going through that, you met him, y'all became good friends, and then being with him almost all, all the time, listening to what God called him to do, and then actually seeing firsthand, which essentially turned into you being the chairman of the deacon board. So I know that you have so many memories. No, oh, yes. But if I could ask, what would be your either your best or favorite memory of the founder? Oh, well, since he would take me everywhere he went, he, he would call me his son. Really? And uh, he didn't introduce me as a member or deacons too much, but as my son, this is my, my son. And I really love that because I was that close with him. Wow. And, um, that's the best memory I can make a book, you know. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. I love it. Wow. So, whew. Deke, I listen, you know, I always tell you, talking to you is always a blessing. And we just want to thank you for sharing this knowledge with us. Because, I mean, just you being able to see the vision in its infant stage when it first started to seeing... After that, going through, um, seeing the different ministers and pastors that's come through to see the vision today that's been given oh, yeah. to Pastor Miller. That's right. Yeah, I'm just, I'm sure that your mind, like, it's just wow to watch what God has done and allow you to see it all. Oh, yeah. So um, I appreciate you definitely taking the time out with us, answering these questions. And I thank you and you know we love you. Deacon Mutri, so oh, I love you. we appreciate you. Oh, thank you. Thank you again for being here with us today, um, Sister Hunter. Uh, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. So, can you introduce yourself to our people watching today? Sure. My name is Leslie Williams Hunter. So, it's my understanding that you came here to the Institute in 1961. Yes. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about that? Being born in December, I could not start school. They didn't have kindergartens. You went to first grade, and you had to be six before, I think, the end of October. And being born in December, I didn't make it in, so I would have effectively been sitting out a whole year, waiting to be six, almost seven, before I could go to first grade. My grandparents heard that they were starting a school here at the Institute at Emanuel, and they decided that they would send me here. Mm -hmm. So being that you came here and at that young of an age, what's something that you took away from the school? Discipline. Discipline. Mm -hmm. um, they, Reverend Simmons and Mother Simmons were very loving people. I guess we could have been their grandchildren, oh, maybe. Wow. But um, we were taught you know, the alphabet and numbers, and I learned to read, mm -hmm. and um, I made friends here. Mm -hmm. We sang here. Oh, wow. um, we were proud to be here. Mm -hmm. And I know we were kind of talking a little bit earlier, because I know you said you, you took your love for reading that you gained from here, and that kind of Help, uh, took that on further in life, right? I think you said it went on to be a teacher, potentially? Yeah. Um, when I graduated from college, I started teaching elementary school. Mm -hmm. And then I decided that I was not a good teacher <laughs> <laughs> and that I would have to find something else to do. I had a love of learning and a love of helping people. Mm -hmm. And I liked children, but I just wasn't a good teacher. Mm -hmm. So I decided that, hmm, what do I do to combine my love of reading helping people and still helping children. And I decided to become a children's librarian. Oh, wow. So uh, basically things that you learned here help in, in a sense almost shape your life going forward, right? Because you got that foundation and that love for reading yes. where it took you on to be a teacher yes. and then a librarian. So when you think about our founder, uh, Reverend Simmons, what was your first thought? He was a very tall man. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather was a very short man, so I, I remembered that contrast. Um, he was rather quiet, mm -hmm. but when he spoke, you listened. Oh, wow. And when Mother Simmons spoke, 
you listened also. I mean, they were no-nonsense people. Mm -hmm. They wanted you to learn. They wanted you to put your best foot forward. Not only was it a ref reflection on your parents, your grandparents, your whole family, it was a reflection on them. So we were on our best behavior. And I, I, I remember as well when we were, we were discussing a little bit before, um, I believe you said that they, they gave your grandparents a message about you? Yes. Um, I was always the quiet kid. You know, the, the joke was that if you got me up in the morning, bathed me, dressed me, fed me, and sat me on the couch mm -hmm. at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, I'd still be sitting there. <laughs> I wasn't a, an adventurous child, mm -hmm. but I, I was curious about things in a different way. And I think they saw me sort of absorbing things like a sponge. Mm -hmm. And they said to my grandparents that that child will go to college. Wow. And I, I did go to college, and I was the first person in my family to go to college and graduate from college. Wow. So on top of the, the I want to say confidence in the sense that they probably gave you to, to speak, maybe speak a little more and push for the things that you love, which kind of goes along with the type of person our founder was, and then also speaking that, giving essentially what God gave to them, to your grandparents, and then to watch it take place and happen. Um, from all of that, because you have, you have a lot of memories, what would you say is your best memory or most fondest memory? Um, the fondest memory was learning to sing a song, learning to sing a song called, I'm in the Lord's Army. Wow. And we marched around, you know, it was like, hut, two, three, four, I'm in the Lord's <laughs> Army. And I can remember that song just like it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And that, I'm sure we've learned other songs, but that mm -hmm. one made an impression on me. Really? Um, can I ask why? Um, the sense of community, the sense of belonging to something, the sense of saying that, you know, I belong to the Lord, I'm in His army. I'm doing these things for his glory. Mm. And I can still remember, you know, that song. And I'm, I can't for the life of me remember any other ones, but that song stayed that's with me. Stay with and that's been a long time. Wow. Yeah, because you said 1961 right. to this point in 2023. So I would want to say some of the things that you learned here, like we said before, in a sense helped shape your life and then also gave you a sense of understanding, like you said, that community aspect and that you belong to the Lord. So even probably when you were going through some tough times and everything, that memory kind of was still there. It always pops up. Really? Yeah, it always pops up. Um, Somerville was a very small town then. Mm -hmm. Basically everyone knew everyone here. And um, there were two places we could go. We could go to school mm -hmm. or we could go to church. Wow. And I was in a school at a church. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as we close, uh, if you can describe your experience in one to three words, or uh, what would you describe it as? I'd say it was the best year ever. Mm. I didn't know what I was going to encounter here. I didn't know the friends that I would make here, um, but it was the best year ever. Wow, so being at the Institute here in Emmanuel basically in a sense gave you, like you said, community, um, um, I want to say lifelong friends, and I know you spoke about the discipline and everything, and then in your words, the best year ever. Yes. So uh, I just want to say thank you for, for taking the time out to come and just give us some, some information on our founder, Reverend Simmons, and just the knowledge is great because it's, it's going through my mind. It's a lot. So I, I do appreciate everything, and uh, thank you again. Thank you, and happy Founders Day. Praise his name Praise his name 
celebrate Emmanuel Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. We truly thank God for the G Squad who put together this program. Amen. And all those ones who participated. Amen. Who gave us the history and information. Amen. We thank God for our pastor. Amen. Who allowed this, this day for us to celebrate our founder and our new edifice. Amen. We just truly give God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Amen. For what he continuously do. And at this time, we're getting ready to go into our EBC birthday moment. Amen. Hallelujah, God. Which will be done by our own Reverend Dr. Miller. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. I don't know about you, but I'm overwhelmed by what I just saw. Yes. You know, as I was sitting there, the Holy Spirit was speaking, and uh, he brought me to a scripture when, he, when God brought the Israelites out of Egypt. God spoke to Moses and he told Moses, he says, go out to the people, to all those who have a willing heart and have them give of their jewelry, their pearl, their gold. Just have them to give of what I have given to them. And as I was watching, Pastor, I said, wow, what can willing hearts do? with the power of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just so impressed by what I saw. Amen. And my heart is just overfilled. Now I got to better talk about birthday moments. <laughs> <laughs> Birthdays are very, very important days for each and every one of us. Your birthday is important to me and mine is important to you. See, the Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And when you hear that word made, the beauty of it is none of us see the making. Only God sees the making. 
So birthdays are our mother's manifestation of that great work that God has been doing in our mothers for the past nine months. Isn't that beautiful? Hallelujah. So we're here to celebrate <laughs> birthday this morning. On the first Sunday, we acknowledge and recognize those that were born between the 1st and the 15th of March. This morning, we want to call the name and acknowledge those that were born from the 16th through the 31st of March. So if you are here, when I call your name, we ask that you please stand. And if you're able to, remain standing until I call all names so that we might salute you. Gwen Simon. Jeffrey Guthrie Sr. Jamal Collins. Serena Roberts. Blanche Aguilar, Latoya Gill, Andrea Kennerson, Christopher Simmons, Troy Mays, Shaniqua Cruz White, Brittany Coxon, Cassandra Wiley, Christopher Washington, Deshaun Middleton, and last but not least, our venerable, our dynamic, <laughs> our spirit filled, our under shepherd, a great man of God, Pastor John Thaddeus Miller. We thank God for all of you. We especially thank God for you, Pastor, for the vision, for your faithfulness, your obedience to the word of God, to follow to the vision, regardless of all the naysayers. You stuck with the vision, and look where we are today. Give God the Now we're going to ask that the choir would please join us in singing happy birthday to all of our families. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. to a happier time, which would be our general offering, amen, amen. which would be done by our deacons. And so we ask that you give back to God as he's always given back to us through our tithes and our offerings. And there are certainly other ways of giving. You can give through our um, EBC um, cash app, which is dollar sign EBC 106, or our Tiley app. We ask that you give generously and we will have a young person who will be coming forward to hold, um, hold our educational basket for the youth, amen. Amen. And we also have, um, also, this is um, the fourth Sunday, so we are asking that you come forth with your, um, your principal monthly payments. Amen. i 
sugar on it. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for his obedience. We thank God for his life living. We thank God that he speaks to him. Amen. And so that word hit you. Amen. Say, Lord, help me. Amen. So after the singing of the choir, it'll be none other than our pastor, John T. Miller, who'll be bringing forth the word of God. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Now oh, come on and put your hands together and give God some praise in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. You won't leave here like you came oh, in His name. For the powers of the Lord, it's still the same. And you won't leave him like you came in Jesus' name. You won't leave him like you came. In Jesus' name. How many of you believe that? You won't leave here like you came. Whoa, in his name. For the powers of the Lord, it's still the same. And you. Like you can in Jesus' name. Come on, let's sing it one more time. But this time, let's make it personal. Say, I won't leave here like I can in Jesus' name. Listen, listen, listen now. Bound, oppressed, afflicted, sick For the powers of the Lord, it's still the same. And you won't leave it like you can in Jesus' name. Somebody ought to see yeah. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, we come before your divine presence this morning. Lord, first of all, God, we just want to thank you. We thank you, God, for the move of your spirit. We thank you, God, for how you're touching hearts and minds right now. Now, Heavenly Father, we pray, God, that you would please make us ready for this word that you have already ordained and predestined to be delivered on today. Heavenly Father, we pray, God, that you would forgive us now any sin that we have committed, any trespassing that we have done. Lord, we ask and pray this morning that you would please blot out all of our transgressions and forgive all of our iniquities. For Heavenly Father, we realize and we understand that your spirit cannot freely dwell where sin is. So right now, God, we pray that you would cleanse the house in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, precious Father, by the power that you have invested within me, I bind now any spirit that is contrary to the spirit of worship. I bind it now in the name of Jesus. 
spirit of confusion, that spirit of division. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I bind it. That spirit of jealousy. That spirit of malice. That spirit of hatred. We bind it now. In the name of Jesus. That spirit of gossip. We bind it now. We bind it. In the name of Jesus. That spirit of competition. We bind it now. In the name of Jesus. That spirit of entertainment. We bind it now. In the name of Jesus. We bind it right now. We bind it now. In the name of Jesus. That spirit of depression. That spirit of oppression, we bind it. We bind it now. We bind it now. And Lord, in this house now, for you said that whatsoever we bind here on the earth, it shall be bound in heaven. And then you also said that whatever we loose, on this earth shall be loosed in heaven. So right now, God, in the midst of this service, we release and we loose love amongst your people. We loose a spirit of unity amongst your people. We loose a spirit of rejoice amongst your people. We, we loose a spirit of wisdom, a, a spirit of knowledge, a, a spirit of understanding. Lord, we loose it now in this household today. Now, God, the atmosphere has been set. Now, send Rayma. Speak to us on today, God. Give us a word, God. That would encourage us, Lord. Give us a word, God, that would stand. That we would be able to stand in the midst of this sin sick world. Speak to us on today, Jesus. And Heavenly Father, as you speak, we promise we will not only be hearers of what your word will say on today, but God, we will leave this place with the mentality of being doers. For it is in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, that we do pray. Come on and put your blessed hands together and give God your best praise in this house. Give him your best. Come on, come on, give him your best. Come on, come on, come on, give him your best. this house. My, my, my. Hallelujah. Now I wonder if that's your best praise. Is that your best praise? Hallelujah. Come on, give God your best praise. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Give him your. Ooh, my, my, my. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, ba, ba, ba. Hallelujah. Woo! Get on those. Get tired. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. 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 Ah, uh, my, my, my. Yeah. You, you know, we're going to have to learn how to praise God. Because don't you know, sometimes 
Your blessing and your release is in your mouth. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I don't think you got that. Your next blessing and your next release it's in your mouth. Y'all didn't hear me. Somebody will get it in a minute. Somebody will get it in a minute. How many of you are looking and expecting a blessing? Your next blessing is in your mouth. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. accustomed to the preacher telling you when to praise. And that's why sometimes you can't receive your release because you're waiting on somebody else to lead you into your release. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. But your release is in your Oh, somebody ought to bless the Lord. Ah. Listen, listen. That's why that that's why, that's why, that's why, listen now, we go through ups and downs in life, but you got to activate your release for every down season. How can I activate my release, Pastor Miller, for every down season? Well, listen what David said. David said that I will bless the Lord. And he said, and his praises shall be in my mouth. Release right now. Somebody need a breakthrough right now, and your breakthrough is in your praise. Woo. 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 Bye, bye, bye. 
Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Glory. Sometimes. No breakthrough. It's in your mouth. The Bible says that the power of life and death is in the tongue. You got to learn to speak blessings over your life. Even when the situation seems to be dead. Look at somebody and say, I got resurrection power in my tongue. Oh my God. You got to learn to speak. I don't know about you, but I ain't waiting on nobody to help me get no breakthrough. Now, if you want a breakthrough, you just come on and follow me, and we can get one together, but I ain't gonna wait on you. Somebody got it, somebody got it, somebody got it. You wait on somebody else for your blessing. Some people don't want you to be blessed. Some people don't want you to prosper. Some, some people don't want you to climb up the ladder. Oh, look at somebody and say, you better stop depending on people. My blessing is in my mouth. We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not living anymore. We're not living anymore in the dispensation of law. where you have to wait on the priests to mediate for you. But the last thing I read in the scripture that God has made us priests. Hey! My God. So if I'm a priest, Look at somebody and say, I'm going to intercede for myself. See, my God. That's the problem. We're waiting on people to intercede for us. You're waiting on the preacher. Well, pastor's going to come today, and I'm sure he's going to give me a word so I can be lifted. No! You should come already lifted. And then when the word of God comes, then you can take the word and apply it. <laughs> My God. I feel something moving in this place. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, stop depending on people. blessing is in my mouth and all I gotta do is speak the word of God and I can call those things that be not as if they were and the Bible says that they shall come to pass Lord have mercy My 
Africa. Listen what Jesus said. Jesus said in John 15, he said, if my word abide in you and you abide in my word, he said that you can ask what you will and it shall. And it shall come to pass. Push your neighbor and say, neighbor, open your mouth. You can get over this thing. Whatever you're going through, you can get over it. But you got to learn how to open your mouth and speak to Hallelujah. Listen, I had a message, but God said we ain't gonna preach that today. God said that you got to learn how to open your mouth. Your blessings is in your mouth. Listen, God didn't give your blessing to me, and he didn't give my blessings to you. But look at somebody and say, it's in my mouth, it's in my mouth, it's in Now being that it's in your mouth, what you gonna do about it? What you gonna do about it being that it's in your mouth? Oh, I wish I had somebody that was listening to me. Maybe if I come over here, maybe they're listening to me. What are you gonna do if it's in your mouth? Maybe, maybe they'll listen to me. If your blessings is in your mouth, Brother Tracy, then what you gonna do about it? Come on, come on, come on, what you gonna do about it? But you know what we do? We allow the devil to close up our mouth and to take our blessing. The Bible says that he comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. Every morning he's trying to take your blessing. When you came in this service today, he wanted you to sit here with your little pretty self. With your little nice suit on. And he wanted you to just relax. And every once in a while, hallelujah. Because I'm too dignified. I, I, I don't need to do all of that. And what the devil is doing is he's whispering these things in your ear. It don't take all that. Pastor jumping up. He's shouting. He's screaming. You don't need all that. And then you leave out of here. You came in here like this now. This is what the Lord told me to tell you. You came in here like a mummy. And 
then when you leave out, you leave out just like a mummy. And what's going on with a mummy? Can anybody tell me what's going on with a mummy? A mummy is bound. So you came in the house bound, and then you left the house bound. <laughs> when you come into the presence of God, if you're bound, you should leave. I believe that when Jesus called Lazarus from the dead, they said, Lazarus had on grave clothes. <laughs> now, imagine Lazarus coming out of the grave, mummified, but he's moving. Now, you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, loose him and let him go free. When you come into the house of God, you come to be loose. What am I trying to tell you today? Don't let the devil take your blessing. It's in your mouth. You got to learn to be able to speak yes. blessings yes. in the atmosphere. Yes. Yes. Your bills might be two months past due. But God, I know you're going to make a way. Why? Why do I know you're going to make a way? Because you did it. In other words, you brought me through some rough times in the past. And you are the same God that brought me out of that. So I know you can take me through. Oh, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, loose yourself. Loose yourself. That's what the Lord is saying to you today. You have the authority to loose yourself. Stop waiting on others to loose you. in your mouth. Loose yourself. The things that God has already spoken over your life begin to walk in it. Even though you don't see it happening right now but you begin to walk in it. God gave me a revelation some months ago. And he told me, he said, son, you have to learn how to walk in the prophetic. Sometimes we receive prophetic messages and we're sitting back waiting on the prophecy to fulfill itself. Now, you got to listen to me real close to catch this. Prophecy has been made. Now, when the Bible talks about us waiting on the fulfillment of whatever has been spoken, wait in the Bible is not the same wait 
that is defined in Webster. When the scripture says wait, what it's saying is prepare yourself. Y'all still didn't get that. Can I, can I go a little deeper? And I promise I'm going to be done in a minute. My mom told me that it was prophesied over my life when I was two years old that it was prophesied that I would lead many people to Christ. And I would walk in the office of a bishop. She said it was prophetically spoken over me when I was two. My mom, what she did is she prepared me for the fulfillment of the prophecy. I'm going to show you how you got to be so dedicated to the prophetic word. As I grew up, of course I went my own way. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I started hustling and selling drugs around about the age of 14 or 15. And from hustling and selling drugs on the corner, I went to traveling now from South Carolina to Miami picking up kilos of drugs and bringing it back to South Carolina. But in the midst of me doing all of that, my mom still said, you're going to be a bishop. <laughs> y'all will get it in a minute. Y'all will get it in a minute. I got locked up, went to prison, Sitting in prison. Did three years in prison. I'm sitting in prison. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, this ain't working out. (laughs) (laughs) And my mama came into the prison sat me down in the visitation room. My, t- my eyes are all watery up because my mama coming to see me in prison. And yet she spoke and said, son, dry your eyes up. You're going to be a bishop. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. So my mom, she continued to walk in the prophetic by telling me what God was going to do. Now, the prophecy wasn't activated until I acknowledged it. See, some of you right now, you have prophetic words that have been spoken over you, but you have yet to acknowledge it. And when you acknowledge it, then you will begin to see things begin to line up. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. The year 2000. I preached my initial sermon. Now, after being saved, of course, in 1998, where I was laid up in a hospital, lost 70% of my blood and almost died, stopped breathing two times. 
but God brought me back. And then in the year 2000, now I have acknowledged and I have made up in my mind that I'm going to walk now in that prophetic revelation that my mom got when I was two years old. And I began to walk in the prophetic in the year 2000. And let me show you how quick things work when you or have acknowledged your prophetic revelation. I started preaching in 2000, and God elevated me to pastor in 2008. And from 2008 to this very day, 2022, God, 23, God has allowed me to come to Emmanuel Baptist Church and build a sanctuary over 17,000 square feet. But the key I'm trying to make is that this, you got to learn how to walk in the prophetic. When the prophetic has been given unto you, then it is time for you not to sit and wait, but to prepare yourself for what has been prophesied about you. And that's what I've been doing. And now I'm pastor. But the prophecy was bishop. So I'm still in the preparation stage and I'm working to the fulfillment of the prophecy. Oh, hallelujah. I hope that can help somebody because some of you right now, you have had prophecy spoken over your life, but the first thing you need to do is acknowledge the prophecy. And then once you acknowledge the prophecy, then you have faith in the prophecy and begin to do the things and prepare yourself for the fulfillment of the prophecy. Because, I'm going to say this and this is it. One thing about the prophecy that had been spoken over you. You have to qualify for the anointing. See, a lot of you haven't reached that stage yet because you have yet to qualify for that anointing. How do you qualify for that anointing, Pastor? Well, it comes through one word. And that word is spelled F-A-I-T-H. Faith will qualify you for your next level of anointing. I hope you're eating that. Faith will qualify you for your next level of anointing. See, in order for you to even be an usher, don't you know ushering carries an anointing? (laughs) I go. A lot of people don't work out good in the usher ministry because they don't have that anointing. But you have to qualify for that anointing through your faith. Preaching, same thing. You have to qualify for the preaching through your faith. And what is your faith going to do? Your faith is going to activate your readiness. Faith ain't never made nobody sit down and wait. Faith had, 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 had Noah so uplifted 
This man began to build an ark. And it never rained before. Look at somebody and say, that is faith. That is faith. Why? Because he received a prophetic revelation that God said it was going to rain. So let me pick on you. God said that you should preach the gospel. What are you going to do? You're going to begin to build on preaching the gospel. God said you're going to own your own business. What are you going to do? You're going to prepare yourself to be an entrepreneur. Your faith will qualify you for the level of anointing that he's about to take you to. Hallelujah. So please remember, don't let the devil steal your blessing. Speak it out of your mouth. And prophetic words that have been spoken over you, learn how to walk in the prophetic. By preparing yourself for the fulfillment of prophecy. The message of God to the people of God. Come on, give God a hand of praise in this house. Come on, give him a hand of praise. In this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to ask you to stand. Let us all stand. Hallelujah. After hearing a word like this on today, this was nothing script. <laughs> this was something that God just sent fresh from heaven's breast. This is what you call real rhema. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. So after hearing Rima on today, there might be one that do not know Jesus in the pardoning of your sin. There might be one today that have not yet been born again. You might say, well, Pastor Miller, what is being born again? And why is that so important? Well, according to John 3, Jesus says that a man must be born again in order for him to see the kingdom of God. He also said that a man must be born of the water and of the spirit in order for him to enter into God's kingdom. He said, Pastor Miller, you've done good, but, but, but you still haven't told me what being born again is. And how can I do this? Well, the Bible says the first thing you have to do is repent of your sins and ask the Lord for forgiveness. And then once you have repented of your sins, then you've got to make an open confession that you believe that Jesus is Lord. You believe that he died and that God raised him from the dead. And the scripture says, then and only then shall thou be saved. Do we have one today that wants to receive the gift of salvation, that wants to be born again? We're extending an invitation for you now. We're not asking you at this moment to join the church, but we want you to give your life to Jesus. Do we have one? Do we have one? Hallelujah. Do we have one that wants to be born again? We extend an invitation for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we thank God. We take it that each and every one of you in here is saved. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise because all of us are saved. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But now there may be some that may be watching us live in social media. And if you're watching and you want to be born again, you've heard this word today and you want to give your life to the Lord, please repeat this short and simple prayer after me. Say, Lord, I am a sinner. 
please God, forgive me of all my sins and cleanse me now from all unrighteousness. Now God, I believe that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died and you raised him from the dead. And therefore, I thank you now, God, for saving me. Hallelujah. Come on and let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. If you're watching us and you repeated that prayer after me, today your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are now born again. Hallelujah. And if you're looking for a Bible-based church that you can grow uh, in the grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus, if you would, just leave us a comment in the comment section and we'll have one of our social media administrators to reach out to you immediately following this service. God bless you and we love you all. Hallelujah. Now, at this time, we're going to open the doors now for new members. We might have one in the congregation that wants to become a member of Emmanuel Baptist Church. That you, after witnessing the move of the Lord in this service on today, you have made up in your mind that this is the place that God has sent me to so that I can grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We now are going to extend an invitation for you to come and join this ministry. Here at Emmanuel Baptist Church, we accept you as a candidate for baptism. We accept you under Christian experience. We accept you by letter or by restoration. We even accept you under watch care. If you fit in any of those categories and you want to become a member of this church, if you would now, please come. The doors are open for you. If you desire to be a member of this church, please come now. Hallelujah. 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 Do we have another? Do we have another? that wants to become a member of Emmanuel Baptist Church, where you can receive the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. You can receive a preached and taught word to you. That where you, when you walk out of these four walls, you have a clearer and a better understanding of how God would have you to live in this sin sick world. Do we have another one that wants to become a member of Emmanuel? Please come down. The doors are open for you. Come. God is speaking to you. Come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we thank God for you, and maybe the next time you come and visit with us here at Emmanuel, you feel an ocean of God's Spirit drawing and compelling you to come and join this loving, growing, and powerful ministry. God bless you all, and we love you. Now at this time, we're going to open the doors for prayer. The prayer doors are now open. If you desire prayer, please come around the altar for prayer. For the Bible says that man ought to always pray and not faint. For the scripture says that it is the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous that will avail much. If you desire prayer this morning, please come around this altar as the choir sing. Come, come, come. a special prayer I want you to just raise your hand just raise your hand and my ministers are going to come and they're going to anoint you with oil on today and they're going to touch and agree with you on today that whatever you're asking the Lord for that he would grant it according to his will if you desire a special prayer, just keep your hand lifted. Just keep your hand lifted. The 
ministers will make their way to you and touch and agree with you on today. God sent a word in the house to tell you that you possess the power to your next blessing. He also told us today that we have to learn how to walk in the prophetic. And walking in the prophetic means that you have to prepare yourself for the fulfillment of the prophecy that have been made over your life. Hallelujah. Just keep your hands lifted. And we are going to now go before the throne of grace where we can find mercy. For those of you that are standing around the altar that are not waiting on special prayer, just grab the hand of the person that is standing adjacent to you. Those that are in the audience do the same. For the Bible says that if two of us would touch and agree and ask anything of the Father in Jesus' name, he said it shall be given unto us. So we're acting now in accordance to his word. We're touching and we're agreeing. So now let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, you know our needs. You know, God, our desires. And Heavenly Father, you said in your word that you would supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. You even said that you would even grant us our heart's desires. Heavenly Father, we ask and pray, God, that you would supply every need. And we ask and pray, God, that you would grant our heart's desires according to your will. Heavenly Father, we ask and pray now, God, that some may be around this altar. Heavenly Father, and they're going through some personal issues. Lord God, you know what they've been toiling with. You know, God, what they've been dealing with, Lord. And Heavenly Father, we know that nothing is too hard for you. I pray, God, right now that those that are going through any type of chronic illness, it could be diabetes, it could be uh, uh, migraine headaches, it, it could be uh, cancer, Lord God, it could be back pain or neck pains, Lord. It could be arthritis, God, whatever it may be, God. We know, God, that whatever these old feeble bodies can have, you can heal it. So right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we speak healing over them now. Lord God, you said in your word through the prophet Isaiah, you said that you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquity. You said that the chastisement of our peace was upon you. And you declared that with your stripes that we are healed. Heavenly Father, we know, God, that you took a stripe for everyone that's going through sickness right now. So, Heavenly Father, I pray, God, that you would manifest the healing in the house today. Let the virtue of healing fall now from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Heavenly Father, there might be some around the altar, Lord, that are dealing with emotional issues. Heavenly Father, it might be depression. It might be oppression, Lord. Uh, Lord God, whatever is going on with their spirits and with their minds, Lord, I pray, God, that you would touch in the mighty name of Jesus. For Lord God, you said through the Apostle Paul as he wrote the letter to his spiritual son Timothy, you said that you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Lord God, give them soundness of mind right now. Work out those issues that they have emotionally in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch down, God. And Heavenly Father, we pray, God, for relationships now. We pray, God, for husband and wife relationships. We pray, God, for father and son relationships. We pray, God, for mother and daughter relationship, Lord. We pray, God, for friendships in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, anything that the enemy has devised or, or tried to come to sever those relationships, Lord. We pray, God, that you would send a spirit of reconciliation now. Bring them back together in the mighty name of Jesus. For Heavenly Father, you declared in your word that whom you have joined together, let no man put asunder. 
We know, God, that that scripture not only relates to a husband and a wife, but God, any type of relationship, Lord, that you have ordained, Lord God, and the enemy is trying to divide it. Send now a spirit of reconciliation. Bring those people back together in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, God, I pray that you would look over the whole church. You know our needs. You know what we desire. Heavenly Father, I pray, God, that you would grant all things in accordance to your will. For Lord God, this is your servant's prayer. For I pray now, and I ask these things in Jesus' name. Come on and put your blessed hands together and give God a praise for answered prayer. you but I feel good hallelujah at this time now we're going to hear our deacons report hallelujah 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 Oh my God, hallelujah. Now listen y'all, I feel like shouting today. I know he don't want me to do this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. 
me and this young man right here, some of the story I was telling you, he was right there by my side. <laughs> God has brought us from a mighty oh, yeah. Mm. Hey. Oh my God. Don't tell me God won't do it. I'm a witness that God will do it. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh my God. We have came a long way. And to see us now, Hallelujah. And where he brought us from. We ran the streets together. And now we're in the house of God. Praising God together. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God. We thank God. And to his beautiful fiance. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sister Melanie. Amen. We all went to high school together, too. His fiance, too. Yeah, we all went to high school together. She witnessed some of them little devilish things we used to do. Hallelujah. But to see God has kept them from high school to now bringing them back together. This is a union made in heaven. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. See, 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 God knows how to let things fall apart so that he can put it back together. And when God put it back together, ain't no devil in hell can Y'all better stop right there. We, 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 we gotta stop right there. Hallelujah. Amen. So we thank God. We thank God. We do have some procedures here at Emmanuel Baptist Church that we ask all of our new members slash new converts to follow. And that is we have a new member slash new convert class that is held here at the church every second and fourth Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. So we're gonna ask the both of you, if you would, to please attend those classes and after completion of the class then we'll bring you back before the church and give you the right hand of fellowship amen <laughs> god bless you <laughs> yes sir god bless you god bless you sweetie all right take your seat amen thank the lord <laughs> hallelujah amen amen all right at this time we do have uh Five that we need to come up and we need to give them the right hand of fellowship real quick. Please come. Please come. Amen. Y'all, I know today was set aside to celebrate the founder and we have celebrated him. Amen. But we have to understand that God is the governing force of the church. And when the spirit of the Lord begin to move, we have to move along with the Spirit. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. But we do give honor and we give praise for our founder, our Reverend Dr. Simmons, for him being obedient in 1954 to the voice of God and building Emmanuel Baptist Church. Amen, somebody. Amen. And I know that if he could look down from heaven right now, he would be rejoicing for what God is yet doing through and in Emmanuel. Amen? Amen, Amen somebody. Hallelujah. All right, all right. So we have five today, and we want to just give them the certificates. I have two certificates, and I'm just going to read 
the certificates, and then I'm going to hand them to them. I'm not going to read all of them, okay? Because I know some of y'all are saying, Pastor, I hope Pastor ain't going to read all of them certificates. <laughs> I'm not. Okay? All right. So the baptism certificate will state uh, certified of baptism. This certified that the candidate uh, was baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost on the 25th day of March in the year 2023 at Emmanuel Baptist Church, 106 Boone Street, Somerville, South Carolina. Amen. And also we have a certificate here for each one for new members. And the new member certificate states that this certificate, this certificate states that uh, the candidate has successfully completed the new members slash convert class on the 27th day of February, 2023, given by the EBC ministerial staff at Emmanuel Baptist Church, 106 Boone Street. Amen. And the first uh, baptism certificate and new member certificate goes to Bridget Thompson. The next goes to Dominique Stewart. The next goes to Kristen Hart. Okay, sorry. All right, the next is uh, Tanya Johnson. I hope I ain't messing your name up too much now. That's all right. Take it in love, please. And the last is Christopher Williams. Come on, let's give them a hand, y'all. Amen. So at this time, y'all follow me. And we're going to have our deacons, if you would, please stand. That's good, right there, baby. Give me a mic. Amen. Uh, here at Emmanuel Baptist Church, we share in one of the great traditions of the Baptist Church, and that is, at the time of the Right Hand of Fellowship, we ask all of our new members, amen, to select a deacon of their choice. So at this time now, we're going to ask you, young lady, to select a deacon of your choice. You want them to introduce themselves? Which one? The one with the green shirt? The one with the green shirt. Deacon Lamar. All right. <laughs> All right. Amen. Yeah. No, you stand right there. All right. Deacon Griffin. Deacon Griffin. All right. All right. Deacon Joyner. Deacon Joyner. All right. All right. Deacon Green. Deacon Green. All right. Oh, Griffin. Deacon Griffin. <laughs> Amen. First of all, giving honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And most important, thank you guys for, first of all, doing the most important thing, which is stepping out and, and, and joining faith right now, right? So what we say here at Emmanuel Baptist Church, all the deacons would say, if you can't get a hold of me or my beautiful wife that's over there, you can reach out to any of these deacons here. But most importantly here at Emmanuel, there's a lot to do. Amen. And you know what they said? Idle hands is a devil's workshop, right? So that y'all got to get your hands in something. There's a lot of choirs here, ushers like Pastor was talking about. Y'all got to find yourself something to do. And God bless you all. And thank y'all for choosing me and choosing other deacons. Thank you. All right. Deacon, you want to say? Come on. Come on. You got about two or three of them. Come on. Yeah. Well, thank you for choosing me as a deacon. But like Deacon Griffin said, we are all equal. And we do powerful work here. And y'all will do the same. You just, uh, if you need us, call us. Can't find us. Find somebody else, but we will be here for you no matter what. Uh, that's what Emmanuel is about. We're about love, and if uh, you can't find love here, then we got trouble on our hands. <laughs> so yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen, 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 amen. Come on, give them a praise. Hallelujah. Now, now at this time, 
and I should have done this over there, but now at this time, as pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church, I now extend the right hand of fellowship to you, Sister Hart. God bless you. As pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church, my brother, I now extend the right hand of fellowship to you. As pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church, I now extend the right hand of fellowship to you. God bless you. As pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church, I now extend the right hand of fellowship to you. As pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church, I now extend the right hand of fellowship to you. God bless you. All right, come on, Emmanuel family. Let's thank God for what he has blessed us with on today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now we are going to give everyone an opportunity to greet our new members on today. Amen. And we're going to have them to line up here. And after the benediction, we're going to ask you all to just form a line and greet our new members. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. How many of you enjoyed the service on today? Amen. Now, I do have a message that I have prepared. <laughs> So I want you all to please come out next Sunday. Please come out next Sunday. I will be teaching on the importance of a vision. I will be teaching on the importance of a vision. So please come back out next Sunday so that you can get that word. Amen. But remember what was said today. All right. The power for your next blessing is where? In your mouth. And when it comes to prophetic revelation, what we're going to do? We're going to walk in it. We're going to prepare ourselves for the fulfillment of the prophecies that were spoken over our lives. Amen? Amen. Come on, give God a hand of praise. And also, um, as I stated, we were celebrating our founder, the doctor, Reverend Simmons. Amen. We have some things out in the foyer area. We have a photo of him, and we have a, uh, um, a drop out there for you to take some photos and everything. So we want you immediately after the benediction, please go out take some pictures, and view the photo of our founder. Amen? Amen. Great man of God, great man of God. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's give our founder a round of applause. Yeah. And also, on Blessed Founders Day, we have some hot dogs. Y'all ain't get excited. We've got some hot dogs that our youth have prepared. And I believe there is a little cost to it, but not a whole lot, okay? But let's help our youth department out, and let's go in the back and purchase us a hot dog. Amen? Can we do that? Can we do that? All right. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. We ready to go? All right. Let us stand. Let us stand. Let us stand. Hallelujah. And you know, a couple of, it's been about three or four Sundays, my new little grandbaby has been with us in the sanctuary, and I have yet to say anything about my grandbaby, but we have a new addition to the Miller's gang, and that's little Kingston Thaddeus. Amen, 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 amen. And he got a part of my name, y'all. Y'all said that? He got a part of my name. So, so I'm JT, 
and he's KT. So y'all watch out now, because KT is coming. <laughs> Amen. Come on, choir. Give us a song. to the heavens to be dismissed. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for this worship experience. We thank you, God, for how you moved in the service on today. We thank you, God, for the rhema word that you gave on today. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for these new five members that you've given us on this morning. Heavenly Father, we also thank you for the two that came up to join on today. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for the celebration of our founder, the Reverend Dr. Simmons. And now, precious Father, as we are about to leave this place, but never from before your presence, we ask and pray, God, that you would allow your Holy Spirit to rest, to rule, and to abide in each and every one of our lives. Henceforth, now, and forevermore, let the church say, Amen.